Never before have I found the pyramids deserted. One of the ancient wonders of the world, with no one to wonder at it. Not a single tourist in sight. The largest country in the Arab world, one of my most frequent destinations as Middle East correspondent of the Independent. In 17 years, covering the region and now the Balkans, I'm reporting not so much the peace the West has promised, but a new and angry strain of Islam that blames us for its predicament. What on earth is happening to Egypt? Where are the tourists? This is tourists not here. Today. Why not? That's, you know, they have problem in Egypt that's not coming tourists, you know? This tourists not coming now. It's because of the bombs and the shooting. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Unchanging Egypt is being transformed by a new force that threatens to overthrow the country's pro-Western government that shoots policemen, tourists, government ministers. The most radical Muslims here, the Gama Islamiyah, want an Islamic state in Egypt. Even military courts cannot tame them. Businessmen fly to their destinations, reporters take trains. And the rail journey to Cairo is like Egypt itself. Exciting, suffocatingly hot, hopelessly overcrowded and exhausting. Frustration is a part of Egyptian life. A magnificent, timeless country of excruciating poverty and endemic tiredness. At once beautiful and dirty, the country provides most Egyptians with no more than $12 a month to live on. No wonder the people are moving into Cairo a capital of 12 million people that was built for 3 million. A city in which insurrection and violence can so easily claim the most innocent of victims. Five-year-old Merit Marhus lies in a coma in a Cairo hospital. A bomb set off by Islamic militants and intended for a busload of British tourists has blasted a nail into her brain. I think she can see, uh, but she can't speak. Uh, Does she recognize her parents? I think it's to, to some extent. You think she can recover to a full life? I can't uh, answer you that question. I think no one can answer you that question. I can't decide. بومب ده وهي باباها كان فاكر ان في حاجه في العربيه بس لا الازاز كله وقع اتكسر وكان في الصف كله اتخرم خروم كتير جدا في ناحيه الشمال ان هو كان ناحيه الجيزه طالع والعجل كمان نام كله فجه يحرك العربيه عشان ينقذ ميرت فالعربيه كانت العجل نايم ما قدرش مشي بيها شويه وبعدين ركنها وخد ميرت في مايكروباص وراح لاقرب مستشفى مستشفى ام المصريين فعملوا لها حسوا ان في حاجه في في الدماغ عملوا لها اشعه على طول لقي في مسمار في المخ What do you feel now about the men who set off this bomb? 
يعني ما اقدرش اقول حاجه يعني هو ربنا هو اللي يقدر يوقفهم عند حدهم ان ما حدش يقدر يمسكهم غير هو ربنا هو اللي يقدر يوقفهم عند حدهم واحنا بنصلي علشان الموضوع ده ينتهي في مصر Exotic though it appears to a foreigner, the Cairo suburb of Imbaba is synonymous with those who are trying to overthrow the Egyptian government of Hosni Mubarak. <laughs> Amid these slums live the men who demand an Islamic Republic. The Camp David Treaty, Egypt's peace with Israel, won no converts here. The benefits of peace did not touch these people. In Imbaba, the Gama Islamiyah, the Islamic group, has a network of members. Their martyrs are the young Muslim men hanged by Mubarak's government for attacking foreigners and policemen alike. It's a place where the Islamic Sabbath is scrupulously observed. In homes here, at night, they play videotapes of Muslim insurrection. At an Algerian rally, a preacher holds up the shirt of Khalid al-Islambouli, the Egyptian army lieutenant who assassinated President Mubarak's predecessor, Anwar Sadat. Sadat made peace with Israel, a crime in the eyes of the man who killed him. And those frightening moments of Sadat's own death here in Cairo are played and replayed to an audience of Egyptians for whom religion and violence are the only antidotes to poverty and unemployment. <laughs> In Imbaba, it's not difficult to find those who understand the authoritarian nature of the Gama Islamiyah. What does the Gama Islamiyah now want in Egypt? What does it want now? What is it trying to get? <laughs> What was the effect on people here, and what is the effect now of the peace treaty between Egypt and Israel? the <laughs> إن أصلا يهود في القرآن عندنا إن ربنا حرم الصلح مع اليهود لأن اليهود والنصارى يعتبروا العدو الأول للإسلام ربنا تبارك وتعالى قال بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولن ترد عنك اليهود والنصارى حتى تتبع ملته Three miles and a world away, the Egyptian middle classes can relax at the Gazira Club, safe in the knowledge that they are protected by the government which is now fighting the Gama Islamia. They count themselves among Egypt's lucky ones, the men and women of money, well-educated, unveiled, the secular face of Mubarak's Egypt, who have no desire for an Islamic state. We don't really have a fundamentalist problem here. Well, a foreigner like me sitting here would probably say, but surely you do, because, I mean, the bombs that go off do exist. But this has got nothing to do with religion. 
They may call it that, but it's got nothing to do with the religion. What do you think it is? I don't know what it is, but it's obviously people who want to take over power in Egypt. And because uh, uh, our Egyptians are a very religious people and are very, I don't want to say simple-minded, but uh, appealing to them and calling it religion, I think, is what where they stand a better chance. And this is why they're calling it religion, but it's not religion. This, I admit, it makes me feel a bit divided from the rest of uh, from the uh, from the rest because uh, we don't go to the same places they do. They don't go to the same places we do. Uh, my kids don't go to the same schools they the others do. The Egyptian police are now at war with the Islamic militants. On average, an Egyptian policeman is shot dead every four days. Police and plainclothes agents are on every street, an intrusive presence in the lives of every Egyptian, even if the police claim to have no idea why the Gama Islamia set off their bombs. You don't know what they are asking for, what they are trying to do. They have start, start attacks, tourism, then police officers, then normal people in the streets. And what are the exact instructions here? Now, supposing a car comes along and it doesn't stop, what do you do? They're going to shoot them. But behind the public image of the Egyptian police lies a more sinister force. Human rights organizations have noted that of the thousands of Muslim suspects arrested in Egypt, almost all complain they were routinely tortured by officers of the Egyptian Ministry of Interior. How did the police torture you? Uh, Uh, <laughs> واستمر في ك في كهرباء شفافي ما يقرب من تقريبا حوالي خمس دقائق وبعدين نزل على سدري ابتدى كهرب فيا بعدين هو هو نفس الشخص راح منزل السليب بإيده وابتدى يمسك عضو الذكورة وابتدى كهربني فيه ما يقرب من حوالي عشر دقائق طبعا أنا كنت بصرخ أقوله طب هتكلم هتكلم هقول هقول وبعد ما Travel to the ancient city of Luxor, opposite the Valley of the Kings, and you can witness the shattering economic effects of the Muslim war against Mubarak's pro-Western regime. The men and women who run the tourist trade are out of work. For a nation propped up by American grants of $3 billion a year, Egypt is now losing more than $1 billion because tens of thousands of tourists are too frightened to come to the country. Those Westerners who still dare to visit Egypt are given no information about the violence which threatens them. Do you, do you know what's going on in Egypt? I mean, do you know why the bombing's going on? No, not really. I know it's it's happening, but I don't really know the ins and outs of it. I mean, you, you know there's a man hanged in Cairo yesterday, for example? No, not do aware you, of that at all. Judith, do you, do you know what's going on in Egypt? Do you know why these bombs are going off here? No, I'm afraid I'm the same, no. I'm, I know they're happening, but I don't mm. know the reasons why. The Quran says that God is merciful, compassionate. So how do you justify the killing of innocent people, like tourists? <laughs> أو الحكومة المصرية والوجهة الحكومة المصرية من خارج هي السياح والقلق والوضع الأمن في مصر هي السياح يمكن الحقيقة الوحيدة اللي ممكن تتنقل بحذافيرها قتلوا واحد قتلوا اثنين قتلوا ثلاثة بالضبط بتنقل ل... ل... وكالة الأنباء العالمية أما ممكن أي حاجة تانية ما تتنقلش لكن دي اللي ممكن تخص وكالة الأنباء العالمية وأي دولة عندها أن, إن أي واحد من رعاياها 
حاجه كبيره جدا 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 يعني مثلا امريكا لو واحد اتقتل من امريكا الدنيا بتقوم وبتقعد فرنسا ايطاليا الدول اللي هي العظمى دي كان اي واحد تاني بدون الدول ديت ما مالوش سعر ولا شتم فممكن بعضهم راى انه ممكن ياثر على الحكومه من وقت سايح او اثنين او ثلاثه Military courts have now sent almost 20 men to the gallows. The army has been called in by Mubarak to obtain speedy convictions for those who've already demanded his own assassination. Due process of law is now in the hands of soldiers. <laughs> The Egyptian government doesn't like reporters to write about the crisis facing their country. Despite the facts, they claim we exaggerate, that by reporting the threat to President Mubarak's regime, we are irresponsible. Today, we're encouraged by Western governments to believe that there will be peace in the Middle East and to forget about the Muslim opposition to the West in Egypt, in Lebanon, in Jordan, in the occupied West Bank and Gaza Strip, across all of what used to be the Ottoman Empire. Amid the horrors of Bosnia, where Muslims now face extermination, the world needs good news. But the evidence is there. Westerners need protection in Egypt now. Even the tourist buses down from Alexandria must be escorted by President Mubarak's security men. Sometimes I feel like an Ottoman correspondent, traveling from one end of the old Turkish Empire in Egypt to the ancient Balkan frontier a thousand miles away. For me, the Middle East now stretches all the way to Bosnia, to Sarajevo, where the Islamic faith, brought here by the Ottomans, is under siege. And I think the same now as I did on my previous trips to Sarajevo, that if Muslims in the Arab world feel betrayed, how much more bitter must be the anger of the Bosnian Muslims here who've been abandoned by the West. Sarajevo both a symbol of inhumanity and of our own Western betrayal. A city once known for an assassination that started the First World War. Sarajevo sent my own father to the trenches of France. This is supposed to be one of Europe's great and civilizing cities. Now it is as broken as its people. As I've learned on my previous visits to Sarajevo, no one here is safe from the men up in these hills. Sarajevo remains mixed with Serbs and Croats among its defenders, but most of its people are Muslims. Every single day is worse and worse. And there is nothing to think about it. Mm -hmm. And we have no so hope down. anymore. Why is there no hope anymore? Mm -hmm. 
I'm not sure, but it seems that uh, the everyone let us down. Will the will the West help at all? Dario, check it for Mozapoli. To očekujemo već godinu dana očekujemo, ali ništa je. About one year we are expecting a help from West. Does she wish she was still living in Yugoslavia? First of all, in uh, Sarajevo, uh, military activities have, uh, from our assessment, uh, decreased uh, slightly. Uh, in the last uh, day, the last day and a half. Nonetheless, we are still seeing uh, shelling and the exchange of uh, small arms uh, fire. Uh, but broken down as 20 artillery rounds, 32 mortar rounds, nine tank rounds, and 16 anti-aircraft artillery rounds. Now, uh, is there a single area under the UN control which isn't under shell fire or going up in flames? When you say under UN control, uh, I guess you're saying that uh, advisedly. Uh, in our areas of operations, we are seeing fighting everywhere. Newspaper reports are no way to describe the scale of Sarajevo's tragedy. How should I write about an ordinary, insignificant day in the life of a Sarajevo hospital and describe the sights which you will see now as the routine civilian victims of the city's snipers and artillerymen arrive? This wounded Muslim soldier is waiting to have his leg amputated. When he says it's his destiny, does he mean that he, if he was to live his life again, he would still be a fighter and fight for his cause? Yes. How does his family feel about him now? Does he think the West is to blame? Uh, the West is to blame. No. The soldier is to be fully conscious as they cut off his leg with only a spinal injection to kill the pain. The doctors here have few medicines. There is no electricity to illuminate the operating theatres. So this man's amputation is being carried out in the daylight of a secretary's office. Hmm? 
And how was he wounded? What exactly happened to him? This Muslim boy has just been shot by a Serb sniper as he played in a street. When his mother tried to protect him, the sniper shot her too. How do you account for the man who fired at the little boy we saw just now and then at his mother when she tried to shield him? This happened while you were in the operation. Tell me. Can you tell me? No. But you're a doctor, you may have thought about it. You live in Sarajevo. Yes, but I am a surgeon. I'm not a psychiatrist. Isn't but that... you've thought about it, haven't you? Yes, I saw many people, many children. But you've thought about it. You've thought about these people, haven't you? They are not people. They are not human beings. I personally think that can, uh, couldn't, couldn't do on a human being. We are the victim here. A really victim. From the beginning of the war, about, I don't know exactly the number, but about 200,000 people is killed, is died. And the majority of this number, they are Muslim. We must fight, we must survive also. Snipers. Snipers everywhere. Sarajevo is synonymous with snipers. Is this where the 200 uh, people have been killed? Yes. I can see the problem. Dobro jutro. Kod Huseina smo uče preveli ovaj rano nima skinuli smo zavjes od glave one of badly injured patients but still as you can see good looking fortunately not the bullet that was a sniper the bullet get in into the brain and the head just here and pass in the middle in between the two halves of the brain so he was operating. He will be able to speak and... Yes. Yeah. Dobre. He's a soldier or a civilian? He is. A, yeah, uh, he is the Borac. Yes. yes, he is a soldier. Dečko koji opersa na našoj klinici. Pogodite, dobro jutro. Badly injured patient. He is not a soldier. <laughs> he would like to be a soldier. As you can see, the cap is here. The army, army what of Bosnia. Then? He was queuing for the water supply and the grenade shell came. Seven children was killed and he was injured. And where was he wounded? That was uh, in, yes. Did you operate on him though? Oh yes. yes. He was immediately operated upon. He, he had the palsy, he couldn't move at all. Now he's improving. Again, shell, civilian, mm -hmm. and uh, injury was not that, that severe. She Light was hit injury. in the head or the arm? Hit oh. in, the, in the arm and in the back. Does she remember what happened? She was hit in the head. She was Her husband was killed in the same way. It was in yesterday. Does she remember? Does she have a clear memory? <laughs> she, she, she has. She said, well, I just remember something blowed up mm -hmm. and then a very, uh, uh, very high light was there and after that... She knows she her husband is dead. Yeah, she mm -hmm. knows.
This war is not the war anymore. This is just a crime against the humanity and the civilization. And if you ask me, what else could it be as the reason for the whole world to stop this bloody crime, then I have, not, I have no answer for that. For me, this is more than enough for everybody in the world to do their utmost by all means to stop it are immediately. They doing, are they doing their utmost? Well, I do. But... Uh, the world, though. The world should do. But they don't. Right here. Left. Left. Here. Left. Yes. Straight ahead. Right. Okay. Right. Pass. Okay. Right. 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 Oh, it's not. All right. We've obviously made it. The defenders of Sarajevo, most of them Muslims, like to show reporters their front line and how pitifully few are their weapons. The West maintains its arms embargo against the Bosnian government. The soldiers don't even possess the flat jackets and helmets that we reporters wear. The Serbs surrounding Sarajevo can shell it at will with the heavy artillery which they inherited from the old Serb-dominated Yugoslav army. Muslims are at the mercy of the Serbs and of the West's refusal to give them guns. The front line is anyone's home. The Serbs are about 50 meters away. It's not in our blood to surrender. It's not in your blood to surrender. Yeah. But you've had a year of being sniped at like this. Yeah. How much longer can you go on? It's a difficult question. I mean, what kind of Bosnia will you be living in in the years to come? Well, I think in the nearest future that the things here will be changed. And what will happen? Some political agreement. And what does that mean? You don't know. Yeah. Let me turn. To, let me turn to Mustafa. And Mustafa, I want to ask you, why are you fighting in this in this front line position? Mustafa, I want to ask you, why are you fighting in this front line position? Well, you see, as you know, we were attacked by aggressors. We Borimo se za slobodnu Bosnu i Hercegovinu, za našu domovinu koju smo imali, koju želimo da imamo. Nihad, you're 16 years old. On your Kalashnikov, I noticed you had in green a sign in Arabic. Can I see it? Can you show it to me? Can I see it? No? You won't show it to me. But I mean, I know it's from the Quran. I was going to ask you if you can, if you can read it. Yeah. Why won't you show it to me? Why won't you show it to me? OK. 
But I, I was going to ask you whether you feel that, that God protects you when you're fighting. No. Yeah, he does. Do you pray yeah. to God to protect you? You believe in God very da. strongly. Rekli sam onaj, da svi koji su okrvavili ruke, a nije će stići kazna. Stići i kazna kad tad u njihovom životu neće moći mirno spavati. Baš zbog toga što su ovaj, meni pokvarili djetinstvo, njima mladost. Svima nama su ubacili ono u ruke što ne bi nikad pomislio da će uzeti prije u životu. Baš zbog toga će stići kazna a Bosna će biti konekat. Scaffolding props up the shell-damaged 16th-century walls of Sarajevo's great mosque. Muslims have been in Bosnia for 400 years. Christian Slavs who converted under Turkish rule, they pray as Muslims, although their language is Serbo-Croatian, not Arabic. Everyone knows what happened to Bosnian Muslims in terms of concentration camps, in terms of rape, in terms of destruction of villages, cities, in terms of uh, refugees from their homes. And despite all this, we are punished twice. The other punishment is that the uh, Western community, or if you, if you like, we can say the world community, or the world conscience, or European community, uh, giving us some hopes that they will help us as victims. They betrayed us, and we believed them. And now they are betraying themselves and uh, they don't want to help us, but they don't allow us ourselves to help ourselves. Because it is, uh, it is illogical, it is immoral, it is a cry to hold small people who are striving for survival and giving us these arguments that we don't want to leave them embargo because if we do that, the more killing will happen. And the killing is happening every day, every day. What can Muslims do to defend themselves? We can do because we are fighting for our survival. And we don't ask for your soldiers to come to defend us. We don't ask that. We don't ask Europe or Christians uh, to come and to save the Muslims. We ask only one simple thing. Please, give us our right. And our right is to defend ourselves. And you don't do that. <laughs> From the beginning, you don't put us a chance to defend ourselves. You only give the chance to Chetnik to kill us day by the day. Chetnik's the Serbian to Chetnik forces. Serbs to take more territory. Yes. It's a crusade war. By Christians, you mean? By Christians, yes. Um, why, why? It was thousand years ago, it was the same here. That then from the Germany, from the French, from Italy. We feel that uh, we are not wanted in Europe and we feel that uh, the Christian Europe hate us because we are Muslims. That's our feeling. You see, they are killing me here because I am a Muslim. The only sin, and the only sin that 
And the only guilt we are accused of is that we are Muslims. Much of the real Sarajevo, the spirit of liberal secular life in which Muslims and Christians live together, lies here, beneath the ground, in old graves which have been reopened to take new bodies. Grave diggers are among the only employees in Sarajevo who still have a full-time job. Grave diggers and journalists. We reporters also catalogue this tragedy. But to what effect, I ask myself? Ethnic cleansing. How easily we reporters accepted this phrase. The Muslims who lived in these devastated homes were raped and murdered by the Serbs, not because they were ethnically different from their Serb attackers, but because the Serbs wanted the Muslims' land, and they got it. Our reports of their plunder made no difference. A year ago, the Independent sent me into Serbian Bosnia to search for a village in which Muslims still lived. I found a village called Cela. It had a pretty mosque and a friendly imam who lived in a cottage next door. The Serbs promised to protect them. Now I was going back to see them again, accompanied by two watchful Serb policemen. I'm sure it's a mosque. I went in there before. Keep going, keep going. This, this I'm sure. Yes, I, I, rem I remember went going in here before. This is the mosque. Right. <clears throat> I see the problem here, then. Can you ask the policeman what happened to this yes, mask? I mean, I, I, last time I was here, I walked inside it. It was uh, ordinary. What happened, Kathy? Okay. Can you ask him? On the what happened to the mask? The jammy or something? It's a... Uh... No, no, no picture. Okay, right. Yeah, don't take your phone away. Okay. Right. Again, okay. Okay. Part of a school book. I knew what had happened. How long would these Muslims put up with this sort of violence? How can I forget the place where I work, the Middle East? When Muslims there hit out at the West, we say we don't understand them. Mindless terrorism is the phrase we like to use about them. And every time I see things like this, I wonder what the Muslim world has in store for us. Maybe my reports should always end with the same phrase, watch out. Well, no more mask. It had been blown up with explosives. No one would say who did it, and there wasn't any point in asking the Serb police. And here was the cottage in which the Muslim imam and his family had given me coffee just a year ago. They had disappeared, ethnically cleansed. Only a few days ago, no one would say where they were. But I recognised them from the old family snapshots. These were the people who gave me coffee a year ago. To this day, I don't know where they are. The end of the line for the Muslims of Bosnia. Despite our millions of words, despite the pictures of all our television colleagues, have we journalists made the slightest difference to this tragedy? These men and women were driven out of their homes this morning. Muslims, dispossessed, homeless, betrayed. 
Why did they throw the Muslims out of Bosnia? Why have they done this to you? Zašto mislite da da Srbi su prisili vas van? A čuj Bože moj, moram. Šta ja? Kako je? Kad moraš, moraš. Hajde, ostavi sve svoje i hajde. Eto kako. Ne znamo. Očekujemo od međunarodne zajednice da će nas preuzeti, pa kako nam Bog da i međunarodna zajednica, pa eto. Eno se morate. Idemo, mi znamo gdje ni kuda. Can I ask you, why are you leaving Bosnia? Bogu mogu kazat, a jedan bi drago, kremta to kognica nije. Kad kažu, pa para Bogu, onda je djecama zovu, da će nas prijeti o napuci, pa jedno je čekao da dojdem. Kad se vidim, Kada se radi, iz vatre žive, iz kutarstva, hvala Bogu, hvala Bogu. Pabil Hajde. In the Middle East, as well as Bosnia, I've spent 17 years writing about these people. It would be nice to think the world listened to us journalists occasionally but governments have grown used to ignoring our reports. If you still believe in the new world order, you shouldn't be watching this. Governments want us to think about peace in the Middle East. They'd rather we never saw this, never wrote about it. They'd rather we shut up. Sadika, this is you? Yeah. This is you. And this? Your husband. He's dead. And and this here is? This is your mother here who's sitting behind you now. What do you think when you look back at these days now? For these Muslims, this is their moment of despair, their day of catastrophe. An hour ago, they were Bosnian Muslims in their own homes. Now they are refugees. Just a little local train to take them north, to a refugee camp, another country, to another world, to be scattered to the ends of the earth. Thank you.